Hello and welcome to this demonstration in which I'm going to show you how to design this personalized wooden sign using Arkham Insignia 2015 R2. For those of you who watched the previous demonstration, we have demonstrated how to design a similar sign using Express, so without using 3D modeling tools, but in this demonstration I'm going to show you how you can enhance this design using the 3D modeling tools available in Arkham Insignia. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to switch on to Arkham now. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open an image I've downloaded off the internet. So this one here is just a butterfly image. And what I want to do is to retrace the outer shape of this butterfly and the these inside vectors that are limited by this blue color here. So I could retrace everything using polylines, but the quickest way of doing that is using the bitmap to vector tool. So I'm going to enter the bitmap to vector tool and I'm going to reduce the number of colors first of all. So I want three colors in this image and I'm going to click on OK. And after having made sure that my primary color is set to black, so I'm going to click on black here. I can click on create vectors because I'm happy with the speckle size and the smoothness percentage. Now I can close the form and display the vectors more clearly. So I'm happy with these vectors, but the only thing I want to do is to get rid of these here because I don't really want them in my 3D design. So I'm going to select my vector and enter node editing mode. You can do that by clicking on this icon here or by pressing N on your keyboard. So I want to cut these vectors here. So I'm going to right click on this node and say cut vector. Or I can do the same by pressing C on my keyboard while I'm hovering with the mouse over the node. So I'm happy with this. I can close node editing mode. And with this part selected, I'm just going to click on delete on my keyboard. So I now want to close this vector. So I've got this selected and I can close it with a curve like so and if I'm happy with this I can now select all of my vectors and go vectors export and call them vectors you can choose the file type you prefer I'm just going to go for EPS and I'm going to click on save so I can now close this model down and open the actual model I'll be working on so, new model, which is going to be 200 by 300 with units in millimeters, with the origin in the center of my model and the resolution as high as possible. And I do not need to save my changes as I've already exported the vectors. So, this is my new model. And the first thing I want to do is to create two rectangles. So I'm going to create my first one which is going to be 220 millimeters wide and 110 millimeters high with a corner radius of 8 millimeters and centered in the center of my model. So I can click on create and then close the form because I can create the new rectangle by offsetting this one. So I've got my vector still selected and I'm going to enter the offset tool. I want to offset this by 5 millimeters outwards with corners to be radius and I do not want to delete my original vectors. So I can click on offset and close the form. Now my borders for my design have been created and I can now work on the rest. So as you can see in the image, we need to create some text and to import the butterfly vectors. So first of all, I'm going to create my text you can choose the font you prefer. I'm going to go for this Berlin Sans FB. And I'm going to type in Chloe. And I'm going to click on Create. But I want this to be centered in my model. And I can do that by clicking on this icon here or by pressing F9 on my keyboard. So, the next thing I need to do is to import my butterfly. So I'm going to go Vectors import and create these vectors here that I've just created. So as you can see, it's very big. 
So I need to edit the dimensions of these vectors and I can do that by entering the transform tool, either by clicking on this icon or by pressing T on my keyboard. So I want the width to be 80 millimeters. So I can click on apply and as you can see the height is automatically being calculated if I maintain the aspect ratio. And then I'm going to drag this somewhere in my model. And the next thing I want to do is to rotate these by 30 degrees anti-clockwise. So I can click on apply and close the form. And I can now move this vector where I want it to be. So like this it looks okay. But as you can see, we've got some problems here. On the edge of my wing, I've got, basically I've got the butterfly being too big for my model. So I can just use my arrow key to move it towards my right and then downwards if you want and a bit more towards the right. So like this it looks all right. And I can now create a copy of this vector to have another copy of my butterfly here. So I've got my vector selected. I'm going to click on this icon to copy and then click on paste. So these will be now my copy. As you can see, the original has not been selected. My copy has been selected. So I can now re-enter the transform tool, rotate this by 50 degrees in total clockwise, click on apply, and then modify the size to be, again, 80 millimeters wide. Click on apply and close the form. Now, as you can see, this butterfly is smaller than the other one but I still want to move it a bit downwards so to avoid these overlapping issues here. So I'm just going to use my arrow key and I'm happy with the result. So, this is my design in 2D, it's ready. They can now switch to the 3D view and start to create some shapes. So the first thing I want to do is to give some thickness to my bottom layer. So I'm going to select the inner rectangle and I'm going to enter the Shape Editor tool. You can do that by clicking on this icon or by pressing F12 on your keyboard. And I just want a plane with a 0.1 mm start height with my Relief Combine mode set to Add. So I can click on Apply and if I toggle my zero plane you can see that some height has been added. So I can now select both of my rectangles and create the vertical sides of my model. I still want a plane, but this time I want it 10 millimeters high with the Relief Combine mode set to Merge High. Can click on Apply and now Cancel to see how it looks like. So it looks nice to me and I can now create my 3D shapes. It looks nice to me and I can now create my 3D shapes for the text vector here. So I'm going to select one of the letters and as the vectors are automatically grouped together by Arkham, I can now have them all selected by selecting one of them. And I'm going to re-enter the shape editor tool and this time I want a square shape. I'm just going to make the vectors invisible for the sake of this demonstration. I want an angle of 55 degrees. I want merge high as my relief combine mode, but I also want a start height of 5 millimeters. And I want to limit the height of this square shape. So I'm going to click on limit to height to 1.8 millimeters to have this flat effect on the top of my model. Can click on apply and cancel this to close the form. So it looks nice. And the last thing we need to do is to create the shapes for my butterflies. So I'm going to make the vectors visible again. Bo select both of my butterflies. And first of all, I need to ungroup them. As you can see, they're grouped together. So if I click on one, all of the vectors of my butterfly are selected. I shift select both of my butterflies, right click and ungroup all. So I can now select just the outer vectors for my butterflies and I'm going to re-enter the shape editor tool to create a planar shape 
with a 10 mm start height again. Relief combined mode set to merge high. And as you can see, that's the result we want. So I can click on apply. And without closing this down, just let's inspect the design. And then I want to select all of my butterflies vectors. So including the inner ones. And I'm going to set my relief combined mode to subtract. Start height of zero, but I want to create a round shape with a 20 degrees angle. So if I make the vectors invisible, you can see how this will look. And this is the result I wanted to achieve. So I can click on apply and I can close this down. So I'm happy with how my 3D design looks like. And I can now think about creating my toolpaths. So first of all, we will have to cut this part out of a block of wood. So we will need some vectors that will give us the basically the profile of this shape. So I'm going to select a view from the top and I'm going to create a new vector layer. So I'm going to click on vectors, right click new and call this profile. As you can see, this is now the active layer. And I can now select my outermost rectangle and the two external vectors for my butterflies. I'm going to create a copy of these vectors and then I'm going to make my default layer invisible, my front relief invisible. And as you can see, I've got nothing in my profile vector layer yet. So I can right click and say paste. And as you can see, my three vectors are now in the profile layer as well as in the default layer. So again, I'm going to make my profile layer active. I'm going to select my three vectors and I want to weld them together. So I'm going to click on this icon here that will automatically trim the unnecessary parts. So I'm now going to make my front relief visible again. So I've got my vector still selected, as you can see, and I can now create my toolpaths. So I'm going to click on toolpaths and I'm going to create a profiling toolpath. So I want to machine outside the selected vectors. My material is going to be 10 millimeters. Just to make sure, I'm going to go for 10.1 as a finish step. And I'm going to choose a three millimeters end mill as my profiling tool. Now, in this case, I do not want to add bridges, so you can see the final result on my screen. So I'm going to click on Calculate now, and as you can see, the part has been profiled. We're going to simulate this toolpath once I will have created the other one as well. So I'm going to close this down. I'm going to make this toolpath invisible. And as you can see, I've got my vector still selected, so I can now create a 3D machine relief toolpath. I do not want to machine the old relief because I'm not interested in machining the outer part. I just want to machine the selected vectors and I want to machine inside them. For my finishing tool, I want a small ball nose. So 1.5 millimeters ball nose will do. But I also want to rough the part out with a bigger end mill. So just a five millimeters end mill. I'm happy with the rest, so I can click on Calculate now. Narcan will first calculate the roughing toolpath and then the finishing one. So I'm happy with the toolpaths and I can now simulate them just to make sure that I'm achieving the result I want. So right click on toolpaths, simulate all toolpaths. I'm going to go for high detail, you can click on simulate. And as you can see, the simulation is very quick and I can now click on simulation, click on delete waste material and get rid of the part I don't need to show you the final result. I can close this form down and don't forget you can improve the appearance of the simulation by changing the material here. I'm going to go for a wood, so medium oak, click on apply and this is how your part will look like once it will be cut out of your block of wood. So the last thing I need to show you is how to export your toolpaths. So I'm going to go toolpaths, 
save to part as and first of all you can see that we've got three toolpaths here profiling toolpath roughing machine relief and finishing machine relief i want to save them to separate files assuming i don't have an automatic tool changer or assuming i want to see how these toolpaths will look like just machining the part once one toolpath at a time i also want to append the toolpath details to the file names and then i'm going to Go to my folder where I want these files to be. I'm going to copy the directory, paste it here, and change the name to be Butterfly Sign. You can choose the machine file format you prefer. We support plenty of them. I'm just going to go for a generic G code in millimeters. It will give me a tap file, or in this case, three tap files. So I'm going to click on save and if I now browse to my folder, I've got my three tab files, which I can edit with Notepad++, which is a free software you can get off the internet. And you can now inspect your G code for my roughing machine relief, finishing machine relief and my profiling toolpath. So this concludes my demonstration in which I've showed you how you can create these personalized wooden sign using Arkham Insignia 2015 R2. Thanks for watching.